Okay. Good morning, everyone. I'm going to call the Marion Township Board of Supervisors workshop meeting to order for Saturday, June 25th. This time, I'll ask everyone to please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. For anyone who is interested, there are masks and hand sanitizer at the front of the room. Anyone wishing to address the board can do so by coming to the front and speaking clearly towards the microphone. Uh, please be sure to sign in as well with your name and address uh, when you make a public comment. Is there anyone on Zoom? There is no one on the Zoom at this time. At this time, I will open the floor to public comments if we have any. Dan, Butch, no? Okay, fantastic. In that case, we'll move into the items for discussion. First being Stonecroft Village, a meeting was held on June 3rd, 2022 with the HOA Stone Group, uh, Lions and Hole, McCarthy Engineering and Kozlov Stout. Um, I think the net output of that was that uh, everybody involved kind of agreed that the, the matters are between the HOA and Stone Group. And uh, at this time, paving has begun on Loganberry and Sweet Birch. So we'll keep an eye on that as much as we're able to and yeah. have jurisdiction over yeah. but uh the remainder of the complaints that the homeowners have around curbing streets the clubhouse etc are a matter between them and and stone i'm happy to report that three quarters of the paving as of this morning is complete wow. the beach is complete rosewood short is complete and half of the sweet purchase no, they're making they're making they will finish up Monday weather permit. Okay, that's good. Does it look, look nice good. so far? Are they doing a good job? Uh, excellent job. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. Every run is very close. Good, 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 good. That's yeah. the best outcome that I yeah. think any of us could have hoped for on this whole situation. Yeah, can I have a little bit of an aside from that? Yeah, so, absolutely. So Here, slide your um, mic a little closer to you too. Uh, Dan and I have been working mostly Dan actually. I could say a million thanks to him on retrieving some of the old bills that haven't been paid. So we have to keep in mind that I'm going to try to compile that information, get that over to Andy. And so when it comes time to releasing the bonds, mm -hmm. we have to make sure that those monies have been paid and that there's not any um, holds up on that. Because as Dan was awesome and went through everything, really the bills only go back to 2014. So they're not that old. And as the contract is uh, worded, we should be able to get money for it. Okay. And because we really weren't aware of the situation until, was it 2021, I think? It was late 2021. Yeah, late 2021. So um, that that's some of the information that wasn't available to us that I couldn't have known but for someone telling me that we could have sent out the bills. Mm -hmm. And there was no evidence that the bills were sent until and unless I started doing it. So we have some section of reimbursement. Of course, they're not going to be charged for that, but we're going to compile that information and uh, get that over to Andy as soon as possible. I'm hoping to get that done within the next two weeks. So just keep in mind when it comes to any bond releases, yep. we will not release the file bond, final bonds until either we're directed by Andy that we have to, or those bills have been paid. So. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank you both. The next item on the agenda is the stormwater management waiver request for 114 Rosebush Court. Uh, this is for Mr. and Mrs. Patrick Morris. Uh, they submitted an application to erect an eight by 10 shed on their property and will need the waiver based on the, the existing stormwater management uh, issue that we have in, within Stonecroft. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve their waiver request. Second. We'll call Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. And Nancy is currently working to help us resolve this issue too. Good. Yeah, I think if we get a bunch of these all kind of done and we'll circle back to that more at the same yeah. time, we can advertise them all once rather yep. than advertising yep. piecemeal. Yep. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the stormwater management waiver request for 285 Sweet Birch Lane. This is for Mr. and Mrs. Arthur Brown so, uh, for a 10 by 14 shed on their property. Same basic premise with the stormwater management issue in Stonecroft. I'll make a motion to approve their waiver request. Second. 
Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the MS4 permit waiver. This is a, a waiver that we've had for MS4 requirements the past number of years. Uh, this is for municipal separate storm sewer systems. Our waiver issued by the DEP will expire in 2023. We want to keep this waiver status as long as possible because there are a lot of requirements and costs with a, an MS4 rather than having the waiver. Uh, we would need a motion to authorize McCarthy Engineering to do this. So I'll make a motion to have McCarthy Engineering prepare the MS4 permit waiver request. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. So what happens if they don't? Uh... If they don't give us the waiver, we have a mess of things that we have to deal with with MS4. Yep. It is a very, very, yep. very comprehensive, I'll say, uh, set of things that you have to do around stormwater runoff, and none of them are, are terribly cheap. So, okay, next item on the agenda is the Berks County Conservation District Memorandum of Understanding. Uh, at the February 22 Board of Supervisors meeting, we motioned to sign this. Uh, we then got an updated document on May 3rd stating that some of the language and responsibilities had changed. Um, we would need a motion to sign the, the BCCD MOU with the updates. I don't have any problem with, with signing it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have any problem with the changes in the language or anything like that. Um, did either of you have any concerns? No, not at all. Okay. Uh, I'll make a motion to sign the BCCD MOU with the changes. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Next item on the agenda is the Main Street Traffic Study. Uh, this was performed around stop signs, uh, viability at Church and Main, Water and Main, and Sharp and Main. This was performed by Traffic Planning and Design. Uh, we have received the report, but we are continuing to look at it, and uh, hopefully we'll have some, some good news on Thursday night. Um, I will not be here Thursday night, but... Uh, it should be pretty self-explanatory based on the engineer's report. I'll throw that out there. Yeah. Okay. Next is the road projects for 2022, which includes culverts. Uh, the box culverts were put out to bid on PenBid, and they were opened on June 23rd at 1 p.m. The bids will be awarded at the Board of Supervisor meeting on June 30th. Uh, we did receive three bids uh, to design, fabricate, and deliver the culvert, including the shop drawings. Uh, for Reichert Road, we had three bids submitted. One was for Monarch Products for a total of $86,760. Another one was from Kevin E. Raker Construction, LLC. This was for $124,633.69. And then the next one was for Construction Master Services, LLC, which was $170,000. Marion Drive South similarly had three bids put in. Uh, Monarch Products with a bid of $80,824. Kevin E. Raker Construction with a bid of $110,639.15. Construction Master Services with $165,000. Sheridan Road had Monarch Products at $101,445. Kevin E. Raker Construction had a bid of $127,082.74. Construction Master Services had a bid of $205,000. Marion Drive North had a bid from Monarch Products of $89,598. Kevin E. Raker Construction with a bid of $140,377.56. And Construction Master Services with a bid of $175,000. So pretty much across the board, the lowest bid on that was Monarch Products. And they came to a total of about 350-ish thousand. Um, yeah, three, thank you. Yeah. Um, I had the total here somewhere, but yeah, uh, yeah it's, okay. it's, it's on this. Yeah, yeah I, I have fit this on there. Yeah. yeah, no, it's okay. I have this <laughs> open somewhere. Uh, yes, Dan. Anytime we put this out to bid, we do see a pretty wide variance. Like even when we did the bidding on like the roof work, that it was, there was some that were obviously the, the lower end, which is what we went with. And then we had some that were very high, almost double. Um, that's unfortunately pretty commonplace. And I think it all comes down to what they're charging for like the labor aspect of, of it more than the materials. Yeah. And, and just for, 
Oh, oh, most assuredly. So just for the, the clarity on this, this is just for the parts. This yeah. is not for the, the installation of said parts, but it's yeah. the labor of making the precast yeah. box culverts and end walls and everything else. Um, conceivably, they all should be fabricated to the same engineering standard, which is what would be in those shop drawings. So to me, we, we obviously, yeah. by the nature of the bid pack, we can't do anything with it right now, but the obvious choice is Monarch products being the lowest bid because they're about a half of what CMS was. Mm -hmm. So I'll leave that in both of your capable hands for, for Thursday night, but the sooner we get those ordered, because there's a, a pretty long lead time on getting that fabricated and then delivered, the okay. sooner we can get that order placed, the sooner we can have them kind of moving towards getting just, it in our hands. Just keep in mind too that you're required to take the lowest bid. Yes. Yeah. Otherwise yeah. you can't yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 But I mean it's it's a no brainer anyway. Yeah. yeah. From a financial standpoint that empties out our entire uh liquid fuels fund. Yeah. Um as far as the checking account, there's still money in savings and of course there's money in the general fund yeah. to help supplement this. Yeah we should probably yeah. move money out of the savings back into the checking account since we're going to be starting to, to move mm -hmm. on doing stuff. Oh, no, I think there's sufficient. Funds oh, okay. There. Yeah, well, I mean, e even funds. so, we yeah. should probably move some of yeah. it back over so that we have it there yeah. for, for other projects rather than yeah. having it sitting in the, the savings. Yeah. But, yes. Uh, so that means you can't do anything for the No, no, that doesn't, that doesn't mean that. We have other things in the budget. Yeah. She's just commenting that yeah. that blows out yeah. like the entirety of the one fund that we have. Yeah. Um, all of these things, as was evident in the bids, are yeah. quite costly there's there's, there's yeah. funds yeah. yeah there's funds yeah 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 and then we'll be getting that the arp, the ARP yeah. funds will be receiving we should receive them either this month or Soon. next month yeah. yeah and so i always wait till the statements come in to verify that the yeah. funds have been deposited because yeah. i don't count my chickens before yeah. they're hatched yeah. yeah that'll be good because so, we could yeah. use it for culverts but if we yeah. If we don't have to, yeah. I would say let's let's hold on to it in case we want to do something like with, with the building or yep. if there's another road project that we need to do or, or yep. something like that. Um, kind of on that same vein, I haven't seen anything from Jim McCarthy or BCCT. Did they award the... I okay, anything. I'll make a note here. Text him. We have received the permits for Sheridan Road by Gerald Hoover. The culvert on Marion Drive by Jake Weiss was submitted for the dirt and gravel low volume grant. Um, there's a possibility, like we had just talked about, that they'll fund 50% of the project, which is actually going to be cheaper than if we had tried to do it ourselves, which is great. Uh, next item on the agenda is the Canal Road Bridge north of 422. This is owned by the County of Berks. We received a letter from McCormick Taylor of Exton PA indicating that they have applied for a DEP GP11 permit to repair the bridge. Um, this is something that they actually, I think this was probably three or four years ago now at this point that they they came to the board letting us know that they were planning on working on that, but it's just taken this long to get to that point. Um, they are required to notify the municipality when they're doing things like applying for permits. So we'll just have to keep an eye out on when they're going to actually start work based on that. But uh, the bridge needs a, a little bit of TLC, and I believe when they talked to us the last time, they're actually planning on widening. No, that one. That was the, was that, that the other one? So that's by the one at Charming Forge. They yeah. Oh, just yeah. going to um, what they do is like the, fix half. Yeah. It's kind of like that. Okay. Yeah. But yet they had called somebody called in here asking me about traffic, and I said, "Well, when you're coming." Charming Forge from North Heidelberg and stop at the stop sign because the barn ruins on the left. You almost have to pull halfway out on Charming Forge Road to see left. Yeah. So I, I don't know. They don't have any anything in here about what they're going to do. Yeah, I'd and be. Say, um, I'd be curious because that's basically like a one lane bridge as it is. Right somewhere, it's, I thought it said. Um, I mean, let me scroll through the packet too. Complete the required maintenance of the above reference bridge. I mean, it doesn't really say. 
I'm going to see that it's Okay. We'll keep an eye on it because I'm trying to remember back a number of years the ago. The one on 419, they're going to make wider. Okay. That's that's probably the one I'm thinking of then because there was there were two bridges that they were talking yeah, about. That's and, that one. And they, they had projected that to, they had projected the 419 bridge to start in 2025. Okay. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Because the Charming Forge Bridge, they're not going to replace. They're just going to okay. fix it. Which is the when you come down the hill at the mansion, where you want to go left, there's a bridge right there. Yeah. It's over a mill race. It's not a creek, but it needs work. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You'll have to keep an eye out on that, but really no action needed from mm -hmm. us I at this time oh no it's it's definitely good to know it's definitely good to know because that's yeah oh <laughs> we still need to adjust that yeah 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 okay next item on the agenda is the Tulpahawken forge road bridge floodplain consistency request uh, this was made by retu engineers on behalf of pendot to identify the floodplains within the project area determine the impact of any and coordinate concurrence with the local municipality um, i passed this on to mccarthy engineering but i think maybe we should make a motion to do that just to, okay just, yeah that's just to, i'll wait until jim comes back but i yeah when in doubt always motion um, I looked at it and I was like, I, I don't know how to do this stuff. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know where the floodplain are. I don't, I mean, other than getting a floodplain map from like FEMA or something like that, I wouldn't even be get, begin to know where to start on this because they're looking for like hydrological and hydraulic reports and yeah. things like that, which is all yeah. stuff that we wouldn't have. We would have to get it from the engineer. Speaking of engineers, we got the, the, the stuff submitted from Craft Engineering as well, correct? Oh, I didn't put that on. I know I forgot something. That's yeah. okay. Did Am we, I allowed to bring that up in comments or did, no? Did okay. we spend any money on it or are we looking no. to authorize any money? No. Oh, then, proposal. then yeah, you're, you're good. You can bring that up. Yeah. Okay. We don't have to amend the agenda. Okay. Um, also, while we're talking with Jim being out of the room, um, if I can't immediately find it, can you send me the amended agenda again? Because I think there's something, I, I thought I uploaded it, but Peter Wallace sent me an email and was like, I don't see the amended agenda. Yeah. So I got to, I got to change yeah. that. I think it was one of those situations where it made it up on the Google drive, but just didn't, just didn't yeah. hit the website, but. There's no one else trying to get onto Zoom. Nope, I have it okay. up here. Thank you. Oh, I'll, uh, I'll bounce back to that one. The, the next one's largely just well, the FYI anyway. Ten is going to need a motion to. I didn't put it on today. I don't know if you wanted to motion it today, but I mean, it's going can, to need a motion. Okay, they, I mean, they signatures. can they can do that Thursday night. Yeah. But I know Andy is still looking at it. Yeah. So, uh, next item on the agenda is the PSATS 401A plan. In order to maintain the qualified status of the Marion Township defined contribution plan, we must adopt certain amendments required by the IRS to ensure that our plan continues to comply with all the current laws. We will need to adopt a new version of our plan document, the plan reinstatement. A new resolution needs to be adopted and the adoption agreement must be signed. Andy, as mentioned, is still reviewing these. So at some point we will need a motion, but uh, we won't need one quite yet. So uh, Jim, while you were, you were out, we only talked briefly on a couple of things. The, the first one is there's a request from engineers all on behalf of PennDOT to identify floodplains in a, in a project area. This isn't anything we can do, so we need to turn this over to the engineer and uh, we really should motion to do so, so that it's proper. Okay. So I'll make a motion to uh, forward the RETU engineer request about floodplains uh, over to McCarthy Engineering. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, the next item was largely informational. It's the PSATS 401A plan. Uh, we need to make some updates to our plan document in order to uh, be current and acceptable by the IRS. Uh, at some point, we will need to make a motion around a resolution to adopt the agreement, but uh, Andy is still reviewing these documents at the moment, so we don't have to do anything quite yet. Okay, next is the IRS millage. Uh, this is increased 
they recently recommended to increase millage from 62.5 or to 62.5 cents from the 50 was, was it 58 yeah i think it was 58.5 or something yeah. like that um I don't have a problem with that. We usually typically follow IRS yeah. recommendation yeah, anyway. Because of increased gas, gas prices. Yeah, yes. that makes sense. That's why they were doing it. Yeah, so I'll yeah. make a motion to adopt the IRS recommended millage increase to 62.5 cents. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jen. Aye. Okay. Next is the Tulpahawken police. Uh, tickets need to be purchased. Um, Irene, I believe you were looking yeah. at like possible financial aid. Yeah, yeah. So, so this is a little bit of a complicated uh, situation. So, over last weekend, there was a motor vehicle accident, and actually, Chief Jobnik, I, forgive me if I butchered his last name, Brian, Chief Brian, uh, actually is a firefighter that John has known for years. So, he's at this scene. He didn't, I guess maybe it's one of those things you show up in a uniform, you don't recognize him in that uniform. Yeah. It's the Superman effect, right? So, um, they just started squawking and he's been handed a number of problems that he didn't anticipate and sue informed me that the office staff the secretaries both of them have quit oh boy yeah well, so the secretary yeah. and the police secretary quit wow so um i did ask him to give us a call so that mm -hmm. he could get on the agenda and i mm -hmm. informed him that the workshop would be ideal to really kind of hash out a lot of the nitty gritties and have a good back and forth conversation. And of course the, the supervisors meeting would be, uh, I guess, more appropriate place to, to run some of the um, uh, things that would require motion. But this came up, I want to say it was like February that they asked us for tickets. Mm -hmm. And I think because we had no idea what they were talking about, we just kind of said, whatever. So it's tickets that they hand out to people in our community. Mm -hmm. And I feel bad, Brian wasn't even quite sure where they ordered the tickets from because the prior chief really didn't yeah. give him much information. So he said, I think it's a little mountain printing. I called up a little mountain printing. Sure enough. So for a hundred tickets without, with basically like a no frills uh, um, ticket, mm -hmm. it runs about $167. So I was wondering if we could make a motion at this meeting authorizing uh, purchase of the tickets through little mountain printing for up to $200 if there's any other incidental costs for the Salt Pocket Police Department. Yeah, I don't have a problem with that. Do you want to make the motion? Was that sufficient enough to make the motion? Oh, wait. That's okay. <laughs> so I'd like to make the motion to authorize Little Mountain Printing to uh, print up tickets for the Tulpa Hawkins Police Department for the amount up to $200 to cover any incidental costs with those tickets. And that is for the purchase of 100 tickets. I'll second. So as, as Brian informs me, those tickets last yep. about eight years. Hold on. No, hold on. Okay. Oh, call Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Sorry. I, I want to hear it, but I don't want to break that. No, no, I want to hear it, but I don't want to break the, yeah. break the flow my, my for sure. Bad, my bad, sorry. Um, I, I get too casual and, I, and forgive me. Um, so those tickets lasted about eight years, which is good. And, and I think we have to be cognizant about being very supportive for our police departments. So some of the other issues that, that cause I gave him a call after John told me and I said, Hey, you know, what are some of your other issues? Um, they're looking to hire another officer. Currently their contract is only to service our air till 11 PM. But when there's a call and he is a guy on duty, they send people. So technically they're in overtime, but they're not charging us for it. Okay. So I think what will happen is coming next year they have to account for these costs yeah another big issue which really surprised me was their current police vehicle that they have is not a police vehicle it is a regular standard vehicle so they're looking to purchase a true police vehicle with all the mm -hmm. safety protections that come along with it and then the last thing that i was thinking about because there's an increase in cost and fuel are we able to authorize any funds going towards the police department for those increased costs, or is that out of the scope of what we're doing oh, here? I think it would be out of the scope of the okay. contract, okay. but that doesn't necessarily mean that we can't donate Correct. to the police department. Okay. We would so, need to decide what would be appropriate on that, okay. but there's absolutely nothing stopping us from allocating funds okay. to that for that reason. I mean, my, my idea was $2,500. 
Um, again, that's something that I want you guys there, to, to mull over. Is there a budget item that you, you think we can pull that from comfortably? Uh, probably EMC. Okay. You know, because he has a, I want to say 7,500 and hasn't spent anything and doesn't, was, doesn't think he'll spend did, anything. Did we buy the radios this year or last year? That was, that was, this, la that was last year. Okay. That was a little over $5,000. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, so, let's let's talk about it. I'm not okay. opposed to it because the, to put it bluntly, like the cost yeah. of everything going up is putting the squeeze on a lot of people. And I know it's very, very expensive to run a police department, which is yeah. why we don't yeah. have one anymore. So, and then the last thing on this particular issue, and it kind of bleeds over into another issue. Um, because there are grants available, and I don't, it sounds to me he does not have the manpower to have anyone to look into grants. Mm -hmm. Um I may have a college student who for free and just would require like a letter of recommendation from us as board members mm -hmm. to look into grants that would assist us with all of our things, as well as assisting the police department with obtaining equipment, vehicles, et cetera. Is that something you guys would entertain? Uh, yeah, I have, I have an interest in that. We could even broaden the scope for just grants, community yeah. related yep. grants in general, which would encompass the fire department and the MTCA as okay. well. So no problems so, if I bring in a college student in here, get them kind of going on stuff. Because once I have the computer in the other room, yeah. um, if they want to bring in a separate laptop just to do the research so yeah. they could banter back and forth with yeah, me. that's fine. So we'll start pursuing all kinds of grants that would assist us as well as, as the Tulpa Hawken Police Department. So, and all that they would look for is just a letter of recommendation with our names on it that they could use for their future, whether it's a job or additional education. Yeah. So, yeah, I have no objections to that at all. Yeah. It's a, a good thing for us and a good thing for them. Okay. Oh, and on that note, there is a local grant writer that my understanding has like a 98% success rate. Um, he mm. charges $750. That's in inexpensive. Right. I so I think once we've honed in on a grant and we can decide like this is a project we're going to pursue, then I think he's worth hiring. I, I forgive me, I didn't get his full name and the website. Uh, but it's a local person. I think they live in Sinking Springs or Spring Township and uh, high success rate. Sounds great. So, so I've been trying to do my homework and, and uh, see what we could do. It, it's just so frustrating because we're just bombarded by costs mm -hmm. and like there's, there's no money and, and grants are few and far between, but you know, I hate to say it once Brian brought that stuff up to John, then I talked to him. I'm like, Oh my God, we can't, we can't let that police department fail. Yeah. You know, we can't, it, 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 they help us so much and they're doing so much more outside of the scope of their contract mm -hmm. because they feel the need to help our community as well. Yeah. So okay. I'm all for giving back whenever we can. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. Keep us, keep us posted yeah. on that. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the Berks Book Box. Uh, we received an email from Stephanie Williams from the Berks County Public Libraries asking if they could place a Berks Book Box on our playground. I have no objection to that whatsoever. I'll, I'll even go so far as to make Wait. a motion. No, 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 I have a little bit oh, of an objection okay. to okay. this. So I guess I need to reach out to her <clears throat> and see if they're going to maintain the box. Yeah. I know when um, the Wilmersdorf Library, when it's what right. they call their boxes. They have the little free libraries. Yeah, that. And there's one in front of Daryl's. Yeah, and there's they had asked right. about putting it back here. And the, mm -hmm. the consensus, of, consensus of the board was that we don't have enough people coming back here. Right. Yeah. That I mean, it would be, they thought it would be better. It would be, how do I want to say, people would see it more if it right. was somewhere along Main Street. Yeah, right. I mean, if you build it, they will come. Uh, no. but, <laughs> well, the, the difference yeah. is on the little free libraries, there's a, a steward. So you have someone that's obligated to check the condition okay. of the box and the condition of the books. Okay. Make sure people are put, aren't putting litter or debris or other items in the boxes. So my concern here is who's going to be maintaining this? Are they going to be sending someone around from the Berks County Public Library? So I would suggest we table it. I'll give her a call and I'll ask her that particular question and ask her if she's notified our local library. Okay. So because there's two boxes in our region already and the library's down the road, I, I, I don't want to say I can't see the need, the more the merry. I love yeah. books. My house is, is covered in books and I, I'm a big fan of the library, but I want to know who's going to maintain it. That's, that's my biggest concern. So it's a good point. It's yeah. A good point. So we'll table that one for now. But Because this was, this is different. It's yeah. classic. <laughs> Yeah, right. it's it's not quite the same as like yeah. what's at Boyer's or outside of Daryl's. Yeah. 
Okay. Next is the office equipment. I'm still working on locating the best, uh, most cost-effective printer scanner. So I'll keep working on that and hopefully have something soon. Uh, next item after that is the proposed dog leash and curbing ordinance. Andy is still reviewing it. I thought it, it looked great, so yep. well done there. Um, the Western Berks Joint Zoning Excuse Ordinance. Me, yes. Just, just, um, so we did have a complaint about dogs on the playground. Mm -hmm. I looked through the ordinance book. We do not have a dog leash ordinance, mm -hmm. and we do not have any kind of ordinance saying there's a sign on the playground or anywhere on the touch of property um, curbing your dog or no dogs on the playground. Yeah. I could not find an ordinance for those two things. Okay. If if we enacted the curbing ordinance, I don't know, would we have to put signage up about that or would it be inherently no, supported based I, I would, basically I would the same way crosswalks dogs, are? Dogs must be leashed, dogs must be curbed. I, I think it would be worthwhile to place some in some areas mm -hmm. like around the park, the park and on Main Street, definitely. So, cause, because then there's notice. Yeah. You know, what's the adage? Lack of knowledge of the law is not a defense. Um, but now giving clear signage that you have to leash your dog and you have to curb your dog that they couldn't deny it at that point. So, okay. and so, I am not for prohibiting dogs in the park. Dogs are allowed in the park. People just have to curb mm -hmm. them and have to keep them on a leash. Mm -hmm. I agree. So um, let's, once Andy gets that back in terms of placing signage, Let's do the signage all at once. Like we had gotten that request about the handicap parking mm -hmm. here on Water Street. She um, never came in and picked well, it up. So. Okay. I mean, if she takes too long, she takes too long. We'll just have to put this through as is. But if we can do an ordinance about placing a whole bunch of signs all at once, it would make more sense to do that mm -hmm. kind of in one felt swoop. I mean, I place those in, in various spots around the township because it's a little bit of an issue in my community. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it's an issue in your community. I'm sure your community is pristine, Jim. So, yeah, yeah. Okay. Next is the Western Berks Joint Zoning Ordinance, Section 403. This is about uh, the keeping of pets, specifically things like chickens. Uh, we're working on changing this, but it is a, a bit of a process. It needs to be reviewed by each municipality's planning commission, then by each individual municipality's board and then the Joint Planning Commission then advertised, and then a hearing needs to be held to adopt the changes because of it being part of the joint. Um, Andy had sent us something from Long Swamp Township. Um, I sent back some suggestions, and I know, Jim, you had asked about the goats. Um, the legal wording in there, and I'll defer to Irene on this, is the um, including, and then a list of things like chickens, which means it's not limited to those things. So it would technically encompass like <clears throat> goats too, and other small animals yeah. of that variety. And, and I guess the, the, the general accepted policy for keeping the pets is, is domesticated animals. So, and I did have a little bit of overlap onto the dog leash law that it actually excludes some of the exotics. Mm -hmm. So um, acceptable animals typically are domesticated pets. And so um, if you had to take something to court, if it's a domesticated animal, I'm sure they would be, well, this has been the general rule and the general acceptance within such communities, so. Okay. So I guess we'll have Andy continue to look at that a little bit more, but I think that's a, certainly a step in the right direction for what our community is really more in yeah, line with. Yeah, too much, yeah. yeah. Okay, next is the cold summit invoice. Uh, they don't want to pay. Yeah. Um, and we didn't hear from Wormelsdorf, did we? Mm -mm. So that's mm. the invoice where we had sent a bill that was for the traffic study. And that was, oh gosh, I can't remember. The bill in total was a little over $9,000, but the traffic study portion of it was over $8,000, which should have been split between us and Wormelsdorf. I've tried contacting Wormelsdorf. Sue's tried contacting Wormelsdorf. I'm going to have to send them a letter um, because, be yeah, because we are not getting any response. I'm going to follow the same format that we have for all of our other letters. And so that was turf to Andy because they said they would pay. Then the deal fell through. The letter and the bill was sent before the deal fell through, mm -hmm. which was dated. And so this is still kind of 
you know, I don't want to eat nine thousand. I don't want to eat nine thousand either. Um, but at the same time, um, we have to uh, we have to get response back from Andy, and I think I just have to send a letter over to Wilmersdorf because they're not responding to emails. And every time I've tried to call, it just there's nothing. Have you tried calling lately? Nothing. Nothing. What's the act? Uh, there was like a couple hundred dollars for legal fees, so that's what it was. Yeah, we'll have to keep an eye on that because I don't want to. I don't want to sit on the, no, the nine thousand. No. Okay. Next is the billing questions around if we can bill property owners for craft codes uh, services notice of violation. Uh, mm -hmm. I think we just we got to turn this over to Andy, Andy and find yeah. out what the, yeah. the legal and aspect of it is. Thanks to Dan. Dan's like, you know, why are we paying this? So. We have some residents that are quite offensive. And I think if they started receiving the bill for the notice of violation, again, just another thing on the table to make them compliant. So. Yeah, I'm all yes, for thank it. Thank you, Dan. That, yeah, thank you very much, Dan. Yeah. Very good work on that. You know, I think it's just one of those things that just went over my head because mo the majority of the bills that we get from Craft Code are for um, the permits. Mm -hmm. um, but that just was went right over it. And, I, and it's a couple hundred dollars. Yeah, so, so it's, it's, yeah. it's something that if we can not have to pay that out of yeah. taxpayer funds, we should, should yep. absolutely not pay yep. that out of taxpayer yep. funds. It's, it's something we should not be paying. Right. I agree. But we have to make sure that that's okay. And again, that's another uh, billing thing and adds to my <laughs> I have so much work to do. It's not even funny. Um, yeah. But I'm willing to keep track of it. And as I showed Peter, there's wonderful places in the computer to keep all of the information all together, as well as, as, well as hard copy paper files. So down the road, if someone's looking for it, they could find it in the system. It's not something that's going to be uh, lost forever. Yeah, that uh, attaching things oh to the, the QuickBook records is, oh is very, gosh, very good. Oh my that's wonderful. One of the questions that I have people looking through this stuff, uh, and they Yes, sometimes, yeah, it, sometimes does, it yeah, and we do bill them back for it. So we keep track again in the system to see if if they've paid enough, and if not, then they get bills back for it. Yeah, that one, that yeah. one we do have in hand. Yeah, yeah, but that's that's a very good thought yeah. too, because and a lot of times you are right. We're well, it'll, the yeah, where we actually saw it. yeah, yeah, uh, where I was able to match something with this and with this. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, and that's typically, I think we use the memo line on that to be able to associate, like if it's a specific address or project or something like that. There's always the class, which is yeah. the address, and there's the memo line, which yeah. I try to put in as much information, but yeah. And actually, Sue and I keep track of a lot of that too. We always check to see if they, if there's permits, like Sue's like, well, how much did they pay in permits? And then we make sure that it's still within that range. If there's anything beyond that, they do get billed. Okay. Thank you. Next is the uh, amended IPMC ordinance 2018 3. This is section 106.4 regarding violations and penalties. Uh, this would increase fines. It was advertised in the Reading Eagle on June 20th, 2022. The amended uh, ordinance would be 2022 2. Uh, so um, I was going to say we need Thursday. to, I was going to say we can't do it now just because of the timing of it, but Thursday night you guys would be able to sure, adopt sure. that. Next is the holding tank ordinance and agreements. Uh, our SEO suggested that we update both of these. I believe the last time we had talked about it, we gave some, some feedback to Andy and then they were going to give us a revised copy of the agreement so that it removed things like the, the mandatory hookup date and mm -hmm. some other things in those. Alan, Alan called this week one day and he was going to redo his letter, but he didn't have time to do it. He said they're really, really busy right now. Um, what I got out of his conversation was that, let me get this straight, <laughs> residential holding tanks are different than commercial. Yes. He actually said that our agreement for 
the property along the highway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the way he reads it is we would be liable. We should ask Andy. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, and, and that was part of the email that I sent to Andy previously. After one of the meetings, I tried to compile all the information and I sent him. I think that was part of it too. Yeah. So, and I, I'm, I'm feel confident saying that Andy's not going to make us liable for anything that we shouldn't be. So, but I, I told him again the other day, if he could just give us something in writing, I'm then going to my memory. Yeah. <laughs> um, Anyway. Yeah, everything always in writing. Because he, you know, as he said the other day, he going forward doing inspections now they're going to find which properties have holding tanks but don't have an agreement. So yep. then we need to have get an the agreement. agreement for them. And the agreement that we have deals with a commercial property, not a residential property. Yeah. So anyway. Well, there's a pen on that. I'll make sure that I bring that to his attention. Okay. Next up on the agenda is the Act 537. Uh, our SEO is doing inspections in the Northwest District. The letter we received from Tim Wagner at the DEP was requesting an update on the status of our Act 537 plan implementation. There are some milestones that are coming due and we are under an order of the department to implement the approved official plan. Failure to implement this in accordance with the schedule may result in civil penalties under section 13.1, uh, which is what they had threatened last time. Um, I think we should prepare a letter and send that back to them, letting them know kind of where we're at, that we're, uh, we were getting the costs updated from the numbers that were originally in the plan, which were 2013 numbers, um, and that we are working with a um, firm that does grant uh, sourcing and uh, cost assessments, feasibility. So kind of give them the, the status update on that and uh, just to ask them for their continued patience around the fact that there were some delays because of COVID. So who gets to send the letter? Us. Uh, us. It would be us as a, as a board. Okay. Um, I did forward the revised numbers that we got from McCarthy Engineering over to Joe Baldas already so that they can look at that. Um, at some point, they'll come back with a, an assessment and a proposal and what the cost would be to do the income study, but I, I haven't seen that quite yet. But uh, they needed the revised numbers to really actually kind of get started based on um, what they have available information-wise. So uh, on that, the cost estimates for the Act 537 that we received as updated for 2022 numbers, um, it's effectively almost double. Uh, the cost estimate that we received from McCarthy Engineering to do the proposed project is $9,951,500, which if this was unaffordable before, it is even more so now. Uh, so I think it's going to be absolutely crucial that we get that income study done. And I'll, I'll update my, my charts that I have for like break even for staying on holding tanks versus doing the project. Um, so you can see it in sort of a visual aspect. It's it's very, very cost prohibitive. Um, so unless we can get 80 or 90 or higher than that percent grants on this, it's it's completely untenable. Like uh, There's no possible way that this can be afforded because if you take basically $10 million and divide it across 165 EDUs <laughs> just for the cost of putting it in, that's not the cost of using the sewer every month for the next 20 years or whatever we're, we're looking at as a, a window of time, it is an astronomical number, close to like $70,000 per, per household to do this. And even on a loan, because I started reaching out to um, some financial institutions, it, it just, even if we're paying a million dollars, that's $50,000 a year from yep. the township for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. That's without interest. Yep. So, I mean, that's just, yep. it, I hate to say it's going to be a headache. We're probably going to have to face it. We are. We're going to have, he doesn't care. Yeah. We're going to have to face care. it, but we have to, right. we have to go into this with the assumption, basically worst case scenario. How yeah. do we, how do we do this if we have to do it? But we also need to get that, yeah, that income know. information because yeah. if we have to challenge it and say like, look, we want to comply, yeah. but there's no possible way we can do it. We need hard 
facts and figures to be able to stand on. Otherwise it's subjective. Yep. It becomes down to, Oh, you just don't want to do it. No, it's, we absolutely can. Yeah. Here's why. Yeah. This so, is what our budget is. This is what this, funds come in and this is, you know, yeah, that's, that is a, it, it was, like I said, it was a very costly project to begin with, but it's it, with, like we talked about before, everything is getting crazy expensive very quickly. It's, ballooned in an almost astronomical yeah. sense i feel like we're just treading water all the time i'm not even so sure we're treading yeah 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 i mean it's from everything. a cost standpoint it's it's difficult it's yeah. not an easy thing yeah if we oh, had yeah. if we oh, had yeah. that kind of assessment oh, on that and the other yeah, thing yeah, that definitely. is concerning just getting into that if you read the plan like project cost aside there's a, a hookup fee that you'd have to pay and your monthly cost varies depending on what your hookup fee was so if you had the most expensive hookup fee it was like 60 dollars a month which is still in my opinion expensive for mm -hmm. for sewer i know that's mm -hmm. roughly about what stonecroft pays but we'll leave that there um but if you took the least expensive hookup option it was like 120 dollars a month so you're you're still you're taking a huge upfront cost and then putting a lot of cost on top of it as well so very expensive no matter how you slice it yeah. this would be a very difficult thing for any household to be able to support let alone we have a lot of people that are retired on, on fixed, fixed incomes, incomes yeah. yeah um now with inflation and stuff it's awful it's just awful that was my biggest concern that you'd actually have people just leaving up and leave yeah, yeah. And that's the other the unintended yeah. consequence of that and i don't want to see anybody leave yeah. for the record but when you have people up and leave that's one less person paying in yep. which means that everything yep. just exponentially increases for everybody else because yep. you're having to pick up where there's one less edu in yep. the mix so what do we do with these people doing like the one we got the other day that was pumping the sewage into a hole in the neck? well that's in that case that would fall under even without the sewer best technical guidance if it's a property where you'd be able to install a system like a sand mound or a septic system or some sort of aerated thing then you would do that otherwise if if it's too small of a property or there's no system that's suitable to go in there it's a holding tank and that's where you'd have to have it pumped out regularly inspected once a year so that's that's kind of the course what i'm trying to avoid is i understand from that letter that he was cited several years ago and paid a $200 fine. I don't want them to continue to pay a $200 I, fine for I, pumping right. sewage yeah. into a hole in the yard. I agree. And I'm, I'm, I was trying to remember back and I was looking through emails. I think what happened is we got the complaint. There was enough that Gary was able to cite for that, but it wasn't actively happening. They had cleaned up by the time he got there. So the only enforcement action was like, it, essentially just like it overflowed and you had to do something about it um rather than him actually going in there and doing like a full inspection and everything else so that's the the avenue that i want to go down this time with alan if we can is how do we get the seo in there to say the system is absolutely defunct you need to you need to replace it in one way shape or form there is no system yeah that's a, yeah that's that's the that's the i mean right i guess that would technically count as successful maybe yeah. but i don't know well cesspools aren't allowed in ta anyway but the bottom line is, I think we need to make sure that we get Alan in there in some capacity to action on it, rather than I think our hands were tied the last time just by circumstance on on what he could and couldn't do. I was in the play with the neighbor on Tuesday. Good. Good. Okay. The last item on the agenda is the CWP LD uh, for 37 Main Street. This uh, was preliminary plans around stormwater management. Um, they submitted a waiver request letter on the 15th of June. It was reviewed by the Planning Commission on June 21st, um, and they've indicated that some revisions will be needed to the plan, uh, and they'll be reviewing it again on July 19th. I'm um, going to start putting these on your agenda just so we can track the time that you have it, okay. um, and just keep you informed of what Planning Commission works uh, for They me. did request waivers, that, that laundry list of li waivers that everybody requests, and the yeah. Planning Commission recommends a board but I'll have that yeah, yeah. Yeah. So there's there's like three or five that people usually well, request for waivers. 12. There's like twelve. Okay. It's, it's like a there's like the same ones every time. Yeah, as I say, I'm thinking of like there was like the, the trees for like yeah. line of sight and curbing and, and yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Yeah. I know there's a there's a handful that yeah. it's every time it comes up, it's just yeah. like, yeah, okay. 
Okay, uh, that is the final item on the agenda. We'll move into comments. Um, yes, yes. Okay. There's a 26.3 acres right next to Stonecroft Village. Does any of that property sit in Township? Yes, half of it. Yeah, there's the, yeah, there's a small portion of it that does. We can look it up on the, the parcel viewer after the meeting if you want to hang out for a couple of minutes. Okay. And the section of track that manages the one that's going up for auction directly across from Dutch Way. Dutch Valley. Dutch yeah. Valley. No, it's Dutch, called Dutch, Dutch Valley. It's no, not called Dutch Valley. No, 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 no. There's, there's, I know which one he's talking about. It is oh. across from Dutch Way. That one's not in our, oh. not in our municipality. Dutch that's, Valley. that's Lebanon. Dutch Way grocery store? Yeah. No, that's in Lebanon County. Yeah. Yeah. That's going up for auction. Oh, that's not us. Yeah, that's not us. That's, yeah. that's far enough past. Our Marion Township ends along 422, right around Hornings. Um, Hardwood furniture, or whatever they're called. That. That's yeah. kind of the line. Yeah. It, it goes yeah. caddy corner, but it. It's, yeah. If you know, yeah. like if you're coming towards Marion, there's that office complex that they put in. It's like Rosewood or something. Yeah. yeah. That's, it's like right after yeah. that is the, the line. Yeah. I think the piece you're referring to besides Stone Park, part of it, part of it is in Marion. They'd have to build houses, but the other part, they could put condos or no it's all so that's the one that heidelberg township changed their zoning from agriculture to median density resident they heidelberg township made their zoning the same as ours which is median density residential that's what that last hearing was for with the yeah. zoning yeah and i think stone Stonecroft is zoned MDR too. You're, it would be the same yeah. style of houses. They wouldn't be able to put like condominiums in because that. Put condos on there. No, yeah. I'm pretty sure. It's so medium. Yeah, you can do like small multi-tenant apartment things, but you wouldn't be able to do big condos or buildings like that because that's high density residential. And that will be interesting because half, about half is in Mary and about half is in that's not quite half, but Heidelberg. Yeah. And if they're going to hook up to Woolmer's Road sewer the, and water, then that has to get involved. So mm -hmm. it's a headache. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yep. Did that uh, big piece sell on the other side of the street? Because the sign's down. Where? Across the street from that one, there was a, I don't know, 30 some acres or something. Let's go back into the woods. Yeah. <clears throat> Oh, that was like that, that was Roy's land. I was, that was like six, I was gonna, six acres. Yeah, I was gonna say that was what Roy used to own. Yeah, yeah, he took that off. Yeah. Um, that I think is in the Bridgeport Road. Yeah. 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 I think that's Walmostorf. Yeah. yeah, that's not ours. On that side of the street, I think, is in the Bridgeport. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because he had a question that he had asked, um, I think Jim McCarthy about, and I talked to him after that about um, like just zoning stuff, and it's it's Walmostorf, and I was like, it's... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, Roy Zart Zartman owns it. Yeah. Okay. Um, I have a couple things. The uh, question that we had around the no parking handicap parking on Water Street. There is no ordinance that we had thought there was, uh, but it's not technically considered a cul-de-sac, which means that that ordinance does not apply there. So we would, per their request, if they submit something in writing, be able to place a, a no parking, or not a, excuse me, not a no parking, a handicap parking sign there, no issues. There's no superseding ordinance that we'd have to worry about. Um, Are we doing it on Thursday? Uh, we really should get them to put the request in and writing yeah, we need before we do that. First. Yeah, we once they first. once they put in the request, we, we know there's literally nothing stopping us from approving it. And, and, an and a handicap space is not, it is technically a public street. Anybody with a handicap placard or license plate can, can park, park in that space. Yep. It's not it reserved not necessarily. Reserved for the resident. Yeah. 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 And that's clear on the oh, Well, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's a couple of things and we got to go through before we. Yeah. 
Um, the only other thing is I know Butch had talked to uh, Martin Paving about the rumble strips. They weren't sure what the rules are. I've been trying to find PennDOT's rules around rumble strips. I can't find anything other than when you put them on like the shoulders. So I'm going to email Jim McCarthy and ask him if he can look up. Because um, I think it's like pub. It's not 408. It's 383 is is one of the things with traffic calming that they, they talk about that. And there's another one. But there's nothing in there about in in the lane like you have on like a, a highway on ramp or anything like that so i want to ask them about that because i think that would be beneficial when people exit the highway having that in maybe 100 feet to help kind of remind people that there is a drop in speed i think the biggest problem is people just come off the highway moving at 50 60 miles an hour and they just don't pay attention and just it's a nice long wide open straightaway and they just kind of go so anything we can do to, to help remind people that it does drop pretty significantly in speed would be would be good but we need to figure out if, what the rules are around it if we can do it did you get a chance to check on the prices on those signs that boomer store put up the little baller things. The one. It's, yeah it's very expensive yeah I don't know if there's cheaper ones out there, it's the, a great idea it's a great idea but any of the ones that i found online were roughly similar same sort of price range they're very expensive but it's it would be something that we want to look at as a, like a capital investment um, maybe not this year, but if we budget for it next year, we we buy one, and that's just that's kind of our, our big purchase in that category for the year. And then maybe look at do it. We want to get another one like the following year, because um, the uh, office in Virginia, there are signs there. Yeah, they are. They're fantastic. They have a lot of them too. They, yeah, they, they spend a lot of money. Yeah, but when you drive through it, if you're doing under the thirty, I think it was thirty mile speed zone, it says thank, thank you. you. Yep. Yeah, and if you're over, it says, you know, slow, slow down, down or you're exceeding the speed limit. Yeah, it's I've, pretty cool. I've driven by a couple of them. They look nice. They, they were two of them. I went to that Eastside convention, and there were two companies. And I know all that had those signs up there. One, one is uh, Main Street. Uh, I'm here to get them. Yeah. yeah, MSI. Both. They were both the same, basically. Yeah. The they were the same price. But I don't know that it would help us. With some people, but it may help us with most. Yeah, I think it's it's certainly good. It's encouraging. Um, speaking of speed signs, uh, Peter Wallace emailed me, and he mentioned that there aren't pieces missing from the thing out there. The connectors in the top that are, are empty are actually for a wireless module and like a hookup for like a supplementary battery or, or something like that. It's additional stuff. Um, so when I'm back, I'll try and get some time with. Peter to, to dig into that. Just schedules didn't line up over the past month. Yeah. But uh, we'll look at that, see if we can't get that working because that's something we already have. Um, with that said, though, I do like the, the on the pole variety. It's something that we can more permanently affix and just have that on, on Main Street. Downside is they're very, the well, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, downside is just they're, they're pricey. They're as pricey as they are nice. So we'll, uh, we'll have to look at that. Um, that's really the only thing I had, um, cause I talked to Sue about the burning ordinance already. She's going to send me a copy cause I want to look at that. Um, Irene, do you have any comments? Yeah. Um, I briefly mentioned it earlier. We had craft code engineering that's interested in picking us up as a client. And so what would be the next step in that process okay. as, as far as going through that? I mean, I, we're trying to make, I would assume we try to make this as seamless as possible. What I would suggest is we handle this the same way that you would do a, a panel interview is we circulate questions amongst ourselves. So we're asking either the same or similar questions. Um, and then each one of us independently talk to craft. Um, that way we can at the next meeting then compare answers and, and say like, I liked this or I didn't like this or, you know, um, really gauge that against any other interested engineering firms that we have to pick the, the best ones. Basically the same thing we did when we picked Jim as, mm -hmm. as a they're supervisor. All, they're all going to do basically the same thing. Yeah. yeah. Their price is right. lower than Garthy's. Yeah. yeah. So and, I don't and, know that I have any questions. Yeah. Okay. And, we're, and, and we're not receiving any response. I contacted another group. They never got back to me. Okay. Um, so I've awesome. heard some good things about that. I yeah. mean, we like working so, with Kraft otherwise. Yeah. And on its surface, I like the symmetry of yeah. having them be 
both uh, zoning for commercial and residential as well. Why do we need to put that on the agenda? Yeah, yeah no, it's okay. That's you, okay. That's put, okay. It on, put it on Thursday. Yeah. But uh, I like working with Kraft. They've been good to us. They do good quality work. And like you said, their yeah. their costs are lower, which is certainly a plus. Yeah. Um, if we're not getting other any other interested parties, I'd say we, we go with, with them. Let's do yeah. it. Yeah. And so I guess then, again, never having experienced this, does like McCarthy hand over materials or is it like starting they, from zero? No, they should hand over stuff. And yeah. I think McCarthy engineering would help finish any of the open projects out. Right. Um, there'd be a little bit of a overlap. Uh, overlap yeah. yeah. Um, but it would just be a, a transitionary period mm -hmm. until they're, they're fully up to speed on that. So Dan has a question. Yes. Okay. Okay. Even better. That's yet another reason to, yeah. to go with them. So yeah, you, yeah, I won't be there Thursday night, but you have you have my vote on on craft. Okay. Um, another issue, and this is something that we thought would just be kind of a housekeeping issue. Um, at the beginning of the year, we received information that um, our prior SEO did not have some permits available. So when he couldn't produce them, we, we sent a letter. He sent us a refund for it because he couldn't produce the permit. So at the beginning of the year, we found another permit that he couldn't produce. We called him, Sue called him, had a nice conversation with him. I sent him letters number one, number two, and now letter number three. So he didn't either give us the permit or send us a refund. And instead we got a response and I coded the email. We got a response from his lawyer. It said, come and pick up the box and, and he's not gonna pay this. So I'm a little bit annoyed about that response because first of all, he told us he didn't, he didn't have it. Yeah. He previously agreed to pay for things that he, the work had been done but couldn't produce the permit. So. I'll go with someone to pick up this box. If yeah. that permit is not in there, we bill them. we're going to continue to bill. Them. And, and, and to me, that's, that's just, you know, for right now we're eating that cost, but, uh, and our new SEO has performed the work and issued a new permit. You know, it's not fair to make the homeowner, you know, pay for someone else's sloppy work, but I'm just a little bit um, agitated. So what that's, was the, what was the total cost? it was 1400, a little over $1,400. So, mm -hmm. You know, to get to get all of a sudden get a, um, a email saying, but the box is there, go pick it up. That's not my job. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what was his he responsibility. Does, he does have some serious, right. he's had some serious health issues right. for over a year. Right. However, right. it's a big however. Right, um, right. This is this is stuff that was done. Obviously, as people, he had, when he was in the hospital, he had people bringing him his mail and he'd suction. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the response I got was, oh, I think it's upstairs somewhere and I can't get it. Somewhere. Right. Is his, so, hip, is his hip ever been put in? No. Yeah. He's still, because, yeah. You know, it, and it so, probably will never be know, put back. I'm not yeah. fond of going to someone's personal yeah. residence yeah. to pick up materials, but I will give them a call cool. and I'll coordinate with a date and a time and I will have someone let, with me. Let me know. I'll go with you. Yeah. Yeah. Because the last time I do is sift through someone's personal stuff. Yeah. As long as it's prepared, and I'll send that that same email to his attorney, and say this is the time, this is the date. I expect to be able to find this material, pick up the box. If he wants to release all the stuff that was done for Marion Township, so that we have it here, that's fine. That's even better. And if I don't find this permit, I'm going to continue to bill him. Yeah, I have you no know? objection to that whatsoever. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I'm still trying to get hold of Bachman's to see what the estimate is for this place. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, nothing. And so now that everyone's on board with getting a um, college student, um, I, I have someone that reached out to me that said she's willing to look for all kinds of stuff and, and get that going. So, you know, it'll be a little bit of a learning curve to have her understand what we can and can't apply for. And once we have an um, uh, income study, that's going to make a difference, especially when it comes to USDA. So once we know what kind of grants we are eligible, then we can move forward on projects. Because I'm always cognizant of cost, 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 cost. Like, I just, I'm just, I'm flat. I mean, we all knew that the, the 537 project would, would be just enormous. Yeah. But it just, 
there's there's I just feel like there's there's all these little leaks and we keep on plugging and plugging and plugging them and going back and plugging them again. And you know, I hate to say it, this board has been left with a lot of crap. You know, we've been left with a lot of projects and people in the town are getting pissed off at us because they think we're spending money. We're not spending any money. We're not spending any money we don't have. We're trying to get funding. So when it looks like we're able to do a big project, we're able to do a big project because we will have that money. Oh, just as another aside, I did reach out to PSAS and I got some response. I know last meeting we had talked about road work. Mm -hmm. So again, tossing that into to the ring. If we were to do like 15 miles of road work, mm -hmm. um, getting a grant for something like that, it would only meet half the cost and we would obligate ourselves to be paying on the rest of it. But those loans will, will be over the course of 35 years. Yeah. So again, it's just... You know, just trying to find funding and funding and funding. I'm, I'm, I'm overwhelmed. I'm really overwhelmed. And there's, there's so many things that I, I keep track of. It's just, there's, there's a lot. So yeah. at some point, I need both of you to come into the office. It might take a couple of hours, but I need both of you to have some familiarity of what I'm doing with the QuickBooks program and all the bill paying and all the information that keeps to, that I, that I keep track of. I had a family emergency the past two weeks and I really couldn't have gotten in here until I did. And it's playing cash up, but I need both of you to have some idea that offer if something like that happens again. Yeah. So, yeah, I yeah. think oh, yeah, I'll be happy to come yeah. in, but I think I have a working enough knowledge that I can, yeah. I can muddle through it. Right, right. Um, but I'm trying to write up everything so yeah. that we have uh, like a operating procedures. Oh, hey, one more thing. I'm, I won't waste anyone else's time. I had also sent the email because there was a PSAP posting over what to do with uh, another pandemic, another mm -hmm. kind of a emergency type of thing. So I think, and I, I briefly talked to John, so he needs to go through his EMC plan, but also something to set up for what are our operating procedures within the office. We would implement X, Y, and Z. Office would be physically shut down, um, at, you know, just like we did with COVID and it was all unexpected. We'd have to implement this um, procedure, this X, Y, and Z, we would have to have uh, the emergency declaration, all that stuff. So that's something that I'm going to work on with John and, and get as much feedback as we can, even from the county level, if the county level has anything or any recommendations. Of course, we got very little to no support from the county. I got a very negative response when I did email the county coordinator. So I hate to say in some ways we're almost on, we're always right. on our own, yeah. but I want to make sure that all the procedures that we follow are hundred percent legal mm -hmm. and make sure that it's, it's a good practices. So I should say in the event when something disastrous happens, we have policies in place again. So not everyone shouldn't be reinventing the wheel. Every time there's a new board, there's policies. These are good practices. This is legal. We've done all the work for you. This is what you do in the event of X, Y, and Z. So I'm just going to spitball here for a second. I, yeah. I think it makes perfect sense to have a, a big chunk of the pandemic response in the emergency yeah. handbook, but based on the nature of what it is. Yeah. But it might not be a bad idea when we have like the, the, the college student in one of the things that they could work on with Sue is just like an office operation manual for simple things. Like if there's a fire, what do you do? If there's a pandemic, how mm -hmm. do we respond to that? If there's a snow emergency, how do we do that? Just getting all that in mm -hmm. in a way that if you basically okay this this horrible thing has happened what do i do you flip to it and you go okay i follow steps one through five mm -hmm. um and we take some of the burden off of sue where she'd be able to just kind of rattle it off and they mm -hmm. can be transcribing and, and getting it honestly together. i think i think her focus was just simply wanting to do stuff with the grants yeah so and we're still sue i believe has is posted but did you post on indeed for no i'm still yeah. working with okay. the job description. Yeah. yeah did we get the the sample one from andy that he was going to send over well, I got one from, I called Wilmersdorf. They don't have a job description anyway. Okay. Um, so Nick had, Nick has a contact at West Reading because he used to work there. So I got one of theirs, but it's different because that's Burrow. Like yeah. Full time. And, yeah. Yeah. You know, so I, I, I actually printed out um, several from the PSATS website. And I'm just like taking lines and sort of. Tailoring kind of to kind of meshing them together to what works. Kind of yeah. Like okay. I, how yeah. detailed do you want me to so, post? No. Um, so when when you write a job description, you want it to be specific enough that it gets the point across, but not so granular that you, you put yourself into a hole. So you would do things like um, familiarity with 
Microsoft Office products and, you know, ability to do um, filings based on like um, uh, typical municipal government standards, and, you know, things like that. Um, maybe familiarity with QuickBooks. Um, Google. Google. Yeah, as I say, um, <laughs> yeah. you want to you want to put in what the proficiencies are and what some of the requirements are. Uh, it's it's commonplace. Like I know just about all the job descriptions that I've written at work also include a like must be periodically able to lift up to yeah. twenty five pounds or yeah, something like that. Of files or it, it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you know. Right. Well. So if you if you have something, what I have is more is I sort of get started getting more detailed as I was making it up. Yeah, I think I need to make more, well, more generic ones. Send it, send what you have to me, and I'll condense okay. it and I'll send okay. it back to you. And then J we can just to get, I did go on Indeed yeah. website, and it, it's pretty easy. Yeah, but now I have to where I have to upload um, the job description. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. yeah. Like I said, send send me what you what you have or what you're comfortable with, and I'll. I'll condense and reformat it because right. I've had to do these a lot with work. All right. So, because I believe the second class catch of code just says something like works at the for the works at the pleasure of the board or reports yeah. to the that board. Is so vague. Yeah. Like, so yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I have one more thing, really mm -hmm. quick. Butch, that that section of William Penn Boulevard by that Sheridan Road by that bridge. Last year, you trimmed down that stuff for us. Could you trim it again? Because there was a car accident there, I think last weekend too. It's just getting where the visibility is poor. Where? To the Esbridge. I'm William Penn here. I'm yeah. terrible with direction. That little bridge. Yeah, the little the that, that, Sheridan yeah. jogs. That's yeah. the Esbridge. It used to be yeah. an Esbridge. S so okay. We still call it the former Esbridge. <laughs> yeah. Yes, if you when you yeah. have time. There, like there's weeds. It, there's everything's so high. Like visibility when you turn yeah, left from Sheridan. There. Yeah. yeah and there, uh, Trees yeah, uh, yeah, it's hard to see. Yeah, yeah, and we've in prior years we've cut them down for that yeah. that same reason that it just yeah. gets difficult to see when you're pulling left. Yeah, from Sheridan onto yeah. William Penn. Yeah, when you have yeah. time. Okay, anything else, Harry? No, I said a lot. <laughs> yeah. Jim, Jim, anything yeah. for you? Just thank you for the waivers for Mr. and Mrs. Brown and Mr. and Mrs. Morrissey. They were, I'm sure they'll be very thankful that they don't have to yeah. pay thousands of dollars to have stormwater management. Yeah, like we said before, this is one of the things that it's it's good that local government is on your side for. And uh, we're all very common sense on the board. So if something doesn't make sense, we're not going to make yeah. people comply to some strange, arbitrary thing that's going to cost them thousands of dollars. We're going we're gonna to reassess it and make sure that it's right for Fix everybody. The problem. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I appreciate your understanding. I'm sure they do too. Yep. Okay, Sue, anything for you? Nothing else. Okay. In that case, I'll make a motion to adjourn. The time is now 10, 11 a.m. Thank you. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Motion adjourned. Thank you, everyone.